Welcome to another video. This is one of the problems that were suggested in 1988 for the International Mathematics Olympiad, but it was not used probably because it was too easy. <laughs> okay, and it says that if this polynomial is not divisible by this polynomial, determine what k is. Now, a question like this will bank on the fact that you have some idea about these two polynomials. There must be something about them that you know, that you expect it to use. And yes, this is the culprit here. You see, this looks like something you've seen before, x squared plus x plus one. If you solve this polynomial, you're gonna get an answer that is called the cube root of unity. So look at this. If somebody says x cubed, equals 1. You know, somebody will say, okay, take the cube root of both sides, right? Now, if you take the cube root of both sides, you're going to get x here, and you're going to get 1 here. So take the cube root to get x equals 1, because the cube root of 1 is 1. But according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, you can't get one answer if you have a third degree polynomial. You must get three answers. So this is not how we solve this. What we do is we move this one over to the left and we say this is equal to zero. And then we factor this using the difference of two cubes. We end up with x minus one times x squared plus x plus one equals zero. Using the zero product property, this gives us x equals one, x minus one equals zero, or x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. When you solve this, you get x equals 1. When you solve this, you're going to get two unique answers. Okay? Unique, very unique answers, or amazing answers, because that's what we call the cube root, because, you see, every single answer you get is going to be an answer to this equation. So, one of them we call omega, the other one is omega squared. I'm not going to write that because we don't need the actual numerical value. We just need the properties. So that means if you take this guy, 1, you plug it in here, 1 cubed equals 1. If you choose to plug this one in, omega cubed equals 1. If you plug omega squared in, omega squared to the third is also equal to 1. So they're all, we know that omega cubed equals 1 and omega squared cubed, which will be equal to the 6 is also equal to 1. And one other thing we notice, if you plug omega into this equation, see what you're going to get. You're going to get omega squared plus omega plus 1 will give you 0. Which tells you that actually omega squared is negative omega plus 1. So there are all kinds of relationship with the cube root of unity, amazing. And that's the fact that we need to use in this video. If you're ready, let's get into the video. So what we could say is that if since we know that the roots of this are omega, they're 1 and omega and omega squared, but we're just going to use omega, okay? If we plug in omega into this, we're going to get 0, because that's what this equation tells us. Plug in omega, you're going to get 0. Okay, so let's call this polynomial, let p of x be equal to x to the 2k plus 1 plus x plus 1 to the 2k. Since omega is a root of x squared plus x plus 1, then p of omega should not yield zero. Why? Because this polynomial is not divisible by this. Okay, because if anything divides this, 
it should also divide this if they divide each other. But if they don't divide each other, the root of this smaller guy should not divide this one. So what do we do now? Well, let's see what this is going to give us. So we know that the polynomial, if you plug in W, omega rather, should be equal to omega to the 2k plus 1 plus omega plus 1 to the 2k. Ta-da-da! -da. Now, if we go back here, we see a relationship between omega squared and omega plus 1, right? I can actually put the minus on this side and do it this way. So I go here and I say this is equal to omega to the 2k plus 1 plus, instead of writing omega plus 1, I write negative omega squared raised to the 2k. Well, clearly this gives me omega to the 2k plus 1 plus, because this is squared, this disappears, it becomes omega to the 4k. Hmm, that's 4k. <laughs> it's very clear. So, what do you do with this fact? Remember, what we're looking for is that because this is not divisible by this, we should not get zero. Are we going to get zero? Under what conditions are we going to get zero? I am trying to investigate when we're not going to get zero. Because we can rewrite this as P of omega will be equal to omega to the k squared plus 1 plus omega to the k to the fourth. Remember that, recall that omega cubed is equal to 1. So if this k is equal to 3 or if this k is a multiple of 3, we're going to get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 to the 4th. So you're going to get 1, 1, 1, and you're not going to get 0. This is going to be 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 to the 4th, which is not equal to 0. So we have found a clear condition that k is based on this fact that if k is a multiple of 3, we're not going to get 0. We're going to get 1 in each of these terms, and that satisfies this condition, that this polynomial is not divisible by this, because we did not get a 0 when we plugged in the root of this, which is omega. So one condition is clear. If k is a multiple of 3, then we're not going to get a 0. That's we have determined k. What if k is not a multiple of 3, but it leaves a remainder? Remember, if anything is not a multiple of 3, when you divide it by 3, it's going to have a remainder of 1 or a remainder of 2. Okay. Ooh. Now, suppose k is some number that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. Let's call it 3q plus 1. Then, then k will be equal to 1 mod 3. That is, it will leave a remainder of 1. Okay? Suppose k is some number like this. That is, 3 times 0 plus 1. So it could be 1, it could be 4, it could be 7, as long as you have a remainder. So what, would this, what does this mean? Well, it means when we go here, w to the k is going to be w to the 1 plus 1 plus w to the 1 raised to power 4. But w raised to, ra ra to the 1 raised to power 4 is the same thing as w raised to power 3 times w to the power 1. You see that? So, then we have P 
of w, we can actually do it here. So it's going to be w, if this is 1, so our k mod 3 is going to be 1, is going to be equal to w to the 2, because this is now replaced by 1. Only the remainder will matter, because if it is a cube, it's just 1. So this is going to be w to the 2 times 1 plus 1. plus w to the to the fourth but w to the fourth is w cubed <laughs> times w cubed come on but what did we say w cubed is it's one so we end up with w squared plus one plus w, that's it. But this is this. We just plugged in w into this, and what do we have? Maybe I should rearrange the w's, okay, so it's nicer. This will always be equal to zero. So in this case, when the remainder is one, you're gonna get a zero. So with this, we can say that this is not a valid nature of k, okay? Not valid for k. So we have just one more thing to test, which is when the remainder is 2. So there are three possible remainders when you divide by 3, all numbers less than 3. So it's either 0 or 1 or 2. We already dealt with the case of 0, because this is 0 mod 3, because k is a multiple of 3. So the remainder will be zero. So that's taken care of just by that state, statement. Here, we're going to try another one. K is some number 3Q plus 2. We're going to try 2 now. The same idea that we do used here. I'm not going to go into all the details anymore. So we can say, so if K is 2 mod 3, since we're saying that's the remainder, then we can as well go here and replace K with 2 because that's the effective portion of whatever the number is. So we can say the polynomial of omega will be equal to, let's use this, it's going to be um, omega to the fourth, because this will be 2 times 2, uh, omega to the fourth plus 1, plus this is going to be omega to the eighth, omega to the eighth, okay? This is mod 3. But remember that this is going to be 1 because you're going to have omega cubed. This is omega cubed times omega plus 1 plus omega cubed squared times omega. So what do we have? We have omega because this is 1. So 1 times omega plus 1 plus this is going to be... Um, no, this is squared. Okay. It's going to be 1 squared times omega squared, that's omega squared, which is the same thing as omega squared plus omega plus 1, which is still when you plug in omega into this, so you're still going to end up with 0. Not valid. For k. So we cannot get 0. So we've shown in three cases that the only case in which you're not going to get a 0 is when k is a multiple of 3. Therefore, that's it. k is any multiple of 3. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.